Okay. So, so what I'm to, uh, starting the recording here, talking about the um, Great Gatsby essay that we're going to do. And it's going to be based on like a, a prose to prompt like you'd be facing um, for the exam. By the way, found out something interesting about this. So those of you who are choosing to do the exam, what's going to happen is that you will get, well, everybody is going to get an email a few days before the test with your, your ticket. Okay. And so that ticket is what you'll click on the day of the test and it will let you into the test. If you decide you don't want to take the test, don't click on the ticket. Just ignore it and it'll go away. Okay. You just don't have to worry anything about it. There is a makeup test that they have in June and they'll send you another ticket in case they think, oh, maybe they want to do the makeup test. If you don't want to do that test, don't click on the ticket. And then, so if you did pay money for it or your parents did, then when you have not taken the test twice, they'll refund that money to you. Okay, so that's pretty simple how it's going to be. Um, they've also, what they're gonna do with the test is, is so the, the props that I've been giving you has the author and the, the name and, and when it was written, they're not gonna give you any of that for this passage. You will have no author and you will have no name of the text and you won't even know when it's written. That way people can't try to do a quick Google search on it and find out about it. So it's just gonna be, boom, there's just a passage of prose and you'll have no context for it whatsoever, which is, which is kind of genius, but it's also a little bit sinister. So <laughs> yes. I went, okay, interesting strategy. Wondered how they're gonna do that. So that, that's what's going on with them. So let me um, share the screen of your assignment that we're gonna be doing. Uh, here it is, okay. Now, now, you should see this. So somebody um, just thoughts on our AP Facebook page, put this up. They have created these shirts and if anybody wants one, I thought they were kind of cute. It says, we're virtually unstoppable, AP Literature 2020. And then it's got, it's got a roll of toilet paper and then it's got a mask there, okay. So if anybody wants this shirt, I can put you in touch with it. There she going, they don't want to see the cat. And then the AP Lit and Comp online exam status quarantined, May 13th, 2020. So somebody's made up t-shirts for all of this. I thought that was kind of cute. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so here I was gonna tell you about, I already told you about the exam of the entrance ticket. So let's go through what you're gonna do for this essay, okay? So I, I went through a number of tests and I, I formulated a question based on what I've seen other tests doing. So this one says, analyze the tone and mood Fitzgerald creates in the following passage. When Jay Gatsby and Daisy first meet over tea at Nick's house. I mean, that was like the most awkward first date description ever, right? It's like, oh, I mean, it's just so painful. So that, well, this would be a really good one to analyze tone with. Consider literary devices such as selection of detail, characterization, and dialogue, okay? Now remember, just because it gives you that list doesn't mean you have to use all those elements, but they're, they may give you a list like this, they may not, okay? So this is just kind of a, you can look at details, your characters, your dialogue, those, those are the kinds of things that pop up, okay? Now I wanna share with you also another thing here real quick. And I just got this today. Um, somebody had posted this, and I just also updated onto the website. So someone in the, uh, again, on the, the Facebook, AP Lit Facebook page, these people are amazing. I love them all. I've never met any of them, but I love them all. Somebody put up this vocabulary list today about tone, okay, which just fits perfectly with what we're doing. And sometimes I think we kind of narrow down what tone is or we pigeonhole it. So it's happy, it's sad, it's angry, it's funny. And then we're like, I don't know what other things there are. This list is really comprehensive, gives a whole bunch of ideas. And, and this could be a list that um, when you take the exam, if you wanted to print this off and have it as an open note next to you, you could do that. So you've got your lit terms that you've already created. You can have that as an open note next to you. You could have this too, just in case they ask about tone. And I thought this was really good. So we have positive kinds of tone, 
Um, so you can have something that's got an amiable tone, pleasant, dreamy, hopeful, elevated, brave, jubilant, soothing, cheery, loving. So you've got all these positive kinds of tones and attitudes, which could be occurring. None of those really happen in the Gatsby passage, though, that we're reading. <laughs> then they have also negative tones. Do you have anywhere from accusing and choleric to harsh, shameful, haughty, hurtful, condescending, contradictory? Oh, these are so good. Belligerent, disappointed, tired, facetious. Okay, so it gives you this whole range of different kinds of ways of looking at the tone of the attitude in a, in a passage. I was like, oh, this is brilliant. You could also have some that more on the funny side. Um, amused flippant, scornful, comical, pompous. We, as some of you mentioned that with the, the peregrine pickle one. Teasing, whimsical, cynical, okay? So this is a great list. You can, you can might wanna just like print this out, have it to your side. Or you may wanna look at this for when you're doing the, the assignment that we're doing for today. So let me pull that one back up again. Okay. So what I have given you, you know, let's just go ahead and read through it. We've got time. So that we're all got it fresh in our heads. The day agreed upon was pouring rain. At 11 o'clock, a man in a raincoat dragging a lawnmower tapped at my front door and said that Mr. Gatsby had sent him over to cut my grass. This reminded me that I'd forgotten to tell my Finn to come back. So I drove into West Egg Village to search for her among the soggy whitewashed alleys and to buy some cups and lemons and flowers. The flowers were unnecessary, for at two o'clock a greenhouse arrived from Gatsby's with innumerable receptacles to contain it. An hour later, the front door opened nervously and Gatsby in white flannel suit, silver shirt, and gold colored tie hurried in. He was pale and there were dark signs of sleeplessness beneath his eyes. Is everything all right? He asked immediately. The grass looks fine, if that's what you mean. What grass? He inquired blankly. Oh, the grass in the yard. He looked out at the, uh, the window at it, but judging from his expression, I don't believe he saw a thing. Looks very good, he remarked vaguely. One of the papers said they thought the rain would stop at about four. I think it was the journal. Have you got everything you need in shape of, of tea? I took him into the pantry where he looked a little reproachfully at the, at the fin. The fin is his, the maid, remember? <clears throat> Together we scrutinized the 12 lemon cakes from the delicatessen shop. <laughs> Will they do, I ask? Of course, of course, they're fine. And he added hollowly, old sport. The rain cooled in about half past three to a damp mist through which occasional thin drops swam like dew. Gatsby looked with vacant eyes through a copy of Clay's Economics, starting with the finished tread that shook the kitchen floor and peering toward the bleared windows from time to time as if a series of invisible but alarming happenings were taking place outside. Finally, he got up and informed me in an uncertain voice that he was going home. Why is that? <clears throat> Nobody's coming to tea, it's too late. He looked at his watch as if there were some pressing demand on his time elsewhere. I can't wait all day. Don't be silly, it's just two minutes to four. He sat down miserably as if I'd pushed him and simultaneously there was the sound of a motor turning into my lane. We both jumped up and, a little harrowed myself, I went out into the yard. Under the dripping bare lilac trees, a, car op a large car was coming down the drive. It stopped. Daisy's face, tipped sideways beneath a three-cornered lavender hat, looked at me with, br with bright ecstatic smile. Is this absolutely where you live, my dearest one? The exhilarating ripple of her voice was a wild tonic in the rain. I had to follow the sound of it for a moment, up and down with my ear alone before any words came through. A damp streak of hair lay like a, blue, a, a dash of blue paint across her cheek, and a hand was white, and her hand was wet with glistening drops as I took it to help her from the car. Are you in love with me? She said low in my ear, or why did I have to come alone? That's the secret of Castle Recrant. Tell your chauffeur to go away and spend an hour. <clears throat> Come back in an hour, Ferdy. Then a grave murmur, his name is Ferdy. Does the gasoline affect his nose? I don't think so, she said innocently. Why? <clears throat> Excuse me. We went in. To my overwhelming surprise, the living room was deserted. Well, that's funny, I exclaimed. What's funny? 
She turned her head as if as there was a light, dignified knock at the front door. I went out and opened it. Gatsby, pale as death, with his hands plunged in his weight and like weights in his coat pockets, was standing in the middle of water, glaring tragically into my eyes. With his hands still in his coat pockets, he stopped by me into the hall, turned sharply as if he were on a wire, and disappeared into the living room. It was a bit it wasn't a bit funny. Aware of the loud beating in my own heart, I pulled the door to against I pulled the door to against the increasing rain. For half a minute, there wasn't a sound. Then from the living room, I heard the sort of choking murmur and part of a laugh followed by Daisy's voice on a clear artificial note. I certainly am awfully glad to see you again. A pause and endured horribly. I had nothing to do in the hall, so I went into the room. Gatsby, his hands still in his pockets, was reclining against the mantelpiece in a strange counterfeit of perfect ease, even of boredom. His head leaned back so far that it rested against the face of a defunct mantelpiece clock. And from this position, his distraught eyes stared down at Daisy, who was sitting frightened but graceful on the edge of a stiff chair. We've met before, muttered Gatsby. His eyes glanced momentarily to me and his lips parted with an abortive attempt at a laugh. Luckily, the clock took this moment to tilt dangerously at the pressure of his head, whereupon he turned and caught it with trembling fingers and set it back in place. Then he sat down rigidly, his elbow on the arm of the sofa and his chin in his hand. I'm sorry about the clock, he said. My own, voice, my own face had now assumed a deep tropical burn. I couldn't muster up a single commonplace out of the thousand in my head. It's an old clock, I told them idiotically. I think we all believed for a moment that it had smashed in pieces on the floor. We haven't met for many years, said Daisy, her voice as matter of fact as it could be. Five years next November, the automatic quality of Gatsby's answer shed us all back at least another minute. I had, I had them both on their feet with a desperate suggestion that they help me make tea in the kitchen when the demon, demonic Finn brought, in it on, brought it in on a tray. Amid the welcome confusion of cups and cakes, a certain physical decency established itself. Gatsby got himself into a shadow, and while Daisy, Daisy and I looked conscientiously from one to the other of us with tense, unhappy eyes, However, as calmness wasn't an end in itself, I made an excuse at the first possible moment and got to my feet. Where are you going? demanded Gatsby in immediate alarm. I'll be back. I've got to speak to you about something before we go. He followed me wildly into the kitchen, closed the door and whispered, oh, in a miserable way. What's the matter? This is a terrible mistake, he said, shaking his head from side to side. A terrible, terrible mistake. You're just embarrassed, that's all. And luckily I added, Daisy's embarrassed too. Okay, so that's the passage I've given you. So in these kinds of tests, and it's a little longer one, but I didn't want to cut it too short. So first we need to really, we, we read the passage, we, we know what the prompt is, and then we, we look again at the prompt. So the tone and mood, okay? I just want the tone and mood highlighted. What would you say is the tone in this passage? Give me some definitions. Like uncomfortable, yeah. awkward, awkward, yeah, yeah, comfortable, <laughs> awkward. What else? And we can we can have like at these overarching moments, but then you look at the smaller moments and think what what else is happening in there? What other feelings? What are the kind of emotions? That's another way to look at it. what kind of other emotions are going on in here. Everything is really forced and like unnatural. Like they're trying to. <laughs> um. Anyways, they're trying to like force conversation and stuff. As I drop yeah. into my kitchen. That's all right. It was the clock and it broke. Thank you, Makayla. That just fit perfectly. <laughs> so it's very forced. We even hear um, that Daisy's tone is artificial. You know. Oh hi. Yeah. And we all know what that sounds like. Right, you've all carried on that kind of conversation of, yeah, this is really fake, so artificial. Okay, good. Um, other other moments where the tone has some additional flavors to it. And like the beginning, it's very like, Gatsby's very anxious and you can feel that too. Like the pacing and the waiting for her to come and constantly checking the door, but like not really being there when he's talking to Nick. Yes, yes. So he's he's 
he's very distracted, very anxious. Um, you know, because he said at this first date after five years, last November, <laughs> the date was and the time was. And you're like, okay, that was that was pretty well rehearsed there. You know, you knew all that going on. Um, if you and if you look even at the very beginning, the day agreed upon was pouring rain. Okay, I mean, what what does that immediately do to a tone if you if it's pouring rain? It's you know, it's not like a happy tone. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not promising, is it? Rain is never a, I mean, unless you're a farmer and your crops are dying, then it's a promising thing. But but usually, you know, oh, it's a, you know, a tea, Sunny's come over, it's just kind of sits kind of a, of a darker tension uh, to begin with. Yeah, not going to be great and happy. Okay, perfect. So now once we figure out the tone and the mood, okay, now we got to look at how he did this. How Fitzgerald did this and we've already kind of mentioned that so you can look at details what are some of the details that illustrate any of this kind of tone like like I think Alex was mentioning um pacing back and forth he's looking around um you know oh so like like here we go there he was pale and there were dark signs of sleeplessness beneath his eyes you can you can feel something is going on there okay um don't believe he saw a thing okay he's remarking about things vaguely and and this would also fit in with dialogue okay so we've got dialogue you could look at the dialogue how it is um you know oh he says it blankly the grass yeah the grass is great whatever okay so look at the specific details and what creates that that tone that we already identified okay um so here's another good line about with the dialogue. Oh, of course, of course, they're fine. And he added hollowly, old sport. Do you ever get tired of reading old sport? <laughs> I start going, enough, dude. Oh my gosh. Okay, let it go. Um, yeah. So uh, some weird spacing. I copy and paste this from a PDF, so some of the spacing is a little weird. Let's see, there's some other sections in here that shows this uncomfortable awkward um, feel either details or the characterization how the characters behave okay um, I don't know Daisy seems to make everything feel weird are you in love with me this is her cousin okay it's a blow in my ear oh why did I have to come along <laughs> it's like oh that was kind of odd <laughs> um let's see Here's a great, a great detail. Gatsby, pale as death, with his hands plunged like weights in his coat pockets. Okay. And, and it's, I love this line here, plunged like weights in his coat pockets. Because when you think later of how he dies, he's shot and then he's in the swimming pool. So we don't know if the, if the, the gunshot killed him or maybe drowning killed him. But the gangsters at this time had a habit of, you ever heard of, of lead shoes or cement shoes or anything? They would, they would tie somebody up and they would, you know, put weights on them and they'd throw them in the river and drown them that way. And this almost feels like some foreshadowing to that, but it certainly doesn't feel cheerful. So we've got him pale as death, his hands plunged like weights in his coat pocket. Everything is just pulling down. You can just feel it's just, you know, and then is standing in a puddle of water. To me, this is like foreshadowing his death too. Water glaring tragically into my eyes. <laughs> okay. I mean, th this really sets it. So this is another great detail and also characterization of, of him. You know, he's how he's looking, all right? I need to get some weird spacing again too. Sorry about that. Whatever. Okay. Um, so, so then we hear like Daisy's voice in a clear artificial note. There's that, that, that forced, certainly awfully glad to see you again. Was she? Was she really happy to see me again? Do, you know, you could write about that. I don't know. If it's artificial, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Okay. Um, and then just, just the way that he's behaving, the way Gatsby's behaving. Um, so he's glanced momentarily, abortive attempt at a laugh. Um, you know, he's just, just everything is so tense. Okay, and then let's see, there's another line. 
interesting. I, I love the, the, it's like a demon. She brought in the tea. We couldn't even go clean, make it ourselves. This woman just did her job, darn it. <laughs> okay. Um, so you could pull out little details like that. Okay. Um, Gatsby is feeling alarmed. He's saying, oh, you know, this is, this is a terrible mistake. So there's examples of dialogue in there. Um, he says, you know what? You guys are just embarrassed and she's embarrassed too. So when you go to write this essay, decide what aspects you want to look at to, to express this tone, the uncomfortable, awkward, forced, artificial, anxious, distracted, and then pull out those details and write that up as an essay. Okay. So that is what your assignment is. That's all you need to do is, is, is look through this. Um, I would like to challenge you to time yourself to write it in only 30 minutes. Okay. I, I know some of you have been writing me that you hate that. Oh, well. <laughs> but that's what you need to do. You need to start kind of forcing yourself to write as quickly as you can. And in a way, I think that's kind of freeing because then you go, well, at 30 minutes are up. I don't have to write anymore. I can't see anything else. Okay. So, um, suggestions or ideas or questions about this? I mean, I do have a question about the test. Yeah, go ahead. When and where do I need to register for it? And um, I think you may already be registered. Is this Olivia? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you already are reg registered. I don't know. Let me look it up. Um, so apparently College Board sent all of you who are registered for it uh, 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 an email like a week ago that you're supposed to respond to. And, and I got a report that only three of you responded. You're so, supposed to respond to it? Um, yeah. <laughs> Frankly, I'll we'll have to go fish through that then. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm doing right now. Let's respond to that. <laughs> I, I am getting so many emails from National Honor Society and College Board and stuff, and I'm like, just stop. Yeah. <laughs> I see a puppet, I'm like, oh, don't make me read another one, please. I'm just so like, many emails from colleges. It's like, why bother? Okay, I'm just, yeah. stop. <laughs> I know, I know. I think they're all just trying really hard to still be relevant. We're still important, right? You still need to pay attention to us. <laughs> no, you're not. You're kind of off my list right now. You know, you're not. I know. I don't care about you. This. I'm so sorry. So, um, Olivia, I'll look that up. But yeah, you're each supposed to have gotten an email. Um, I'll I'll go take a look and see. Anybody else want to know if they're registered or not? because I'm, I'm pretty sure Mr. Strand had gone through the roles at the beginning of the semester and made sure everybody was in there. He, was, he did a really good job with that. So I will, I'll double check on that. Okay, good question. Um, any other questions or ideas or comments or anything? Um, so like if we're already registered and all that, are we like, I'm pretty sure I didn't receive any email from them Okay. Um, I'll, I'll track it down. But from what I understand, they already have all your information. So when it comes time to take that test on the 13th, um, and, I, and I mentioned this before, I'm not sure if everybody was here to hear it. If you want to take the test, they send you an entrance ticket and you click on that ticket and it will give you the test at the correct time, you know, to do it. If you don't want to take the test, you don't click on it. You just ignore it. And then there's a makeup quiz, makeup test on it in June. And again, if you don't want to take it, just don't click on it and don't take it. And so if you did pay money for the test and you decided not to take it, then they'll refund it after that. Right. So, so the test is at 2 p.m., right? 2 p.m. hour time. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, great. So what time is it for you, Tiffane? It's going to be at like... 8 p.m., but that's fine. That's that's pretty oh. good. I'd rather have that than like two in the morning or something. Yeah, yeah. There's some um, students in China, Japan, and Taiwan, and, and Korea, and those places, and, and it's going to be like middle of the night for them. Oh my God, I would hate it. If I, was them. I know. And AP, the college board's like, we don't know what else to do. <laughs> like, oh, okay. So, okay, that's good. Yeah, as I get more information, I'll, I'll let you guys know. But good questions. What day do we take the test? May 13th? 
yeah, it's a Wednesday. Oh, okay. So it is, it's two weeks from tomorrow. Uh, that sounds yeah. stressful. Don't say that. Two <laughs> weeks from tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That's why I'm making you do these practice tests. And then it'll be more fun. We'll do funner stuff later. Please do not make us write poems, please. Please. What? Okay. I would like writing poems. That sounds like fun. I think we'll do we'll do some creative writing stuff based on I don't know. Get tell me your ideas. Tell me your suggestions. Like you can you can send them to me in an email or on Facebook or something. And I'll put something together because it was actually Kristen Kilton who recommended doing something different for Great Gatsby. And so that's how I was able to find all this other stuff to give you guys that project. I think that worked out really, really well. Um, well I love what you guys are sending. It's amazing. So I'm trying to see if there's something else along those lines that we could do again. You know, something more creative and fun for you. Okay, let me turn off my recording.